Amen. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is good that we might be gathered together for worship today. This truly is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I welcome all of you as we have come and gathered together for worship this morning. Whether we are here in the sanctuary or you are joining us online, together we create a unique and wonderful community of faith that lifts its heart and mind and voices in praise to God. And we are certainly grateful for the opportunity we have to do so together today. Hope that you'll take time to sign the friendship pads. They're usually on one end of the pew or the other. This is a chance for us to not only have a record of those who've come and gathered together here in the sanctuary for worship, but I hope a chance for you to get to know one another a little better as well. As you pass that pad down and back, you'll get to call one another by name following the service. A special word of welcome to guests and visitors who are with us. It is always a great joy for us to share our worship of God together with you. And visitors, I hope that you will take time to sign those pads as well, that you'll give us a name and maybe address or email or phone number, some other way that we might be in touch with you in this week that is ahead, for we truly are grateful to have you as a part of our worship life together today. You'll see as you came through the narthex today, the narthex is full of opportunities for us to serve this week, and we'll hear a little more about a few of those in the uh, moments that are to come, but uh, many of you have been bringing items for the disaster assistance cleanup buckets. Our fourth and fifth graders will be assembling those this afternoon, so thank you for your generosity in that way. Uh, We're receiving it during the offering today, an offering called Blankets Plus for Church World Service, and you'll hear a little more about that in the time for children, and you'll also have an opportunity to hear from our youth about a a new mission project they're involved with here in just a moment. Coming up this week, this is a wonderful week for us. The men's ministry has breakfast on a Tuesday, so men, please come and join together in that time. The season of Lent begins on Wednesday, February the 14th, and for us that means there are prayer stations available for individual uh, use in the historic sanctuary all day, beginning at uh, at 7.30 in the morning, and those will continue until 6 o'clock. Here in the sanctuary, we'll gather back at 6.30 on Wednesday night for our Ash Wednesday service. It's a traditional service that includes prayer and scripture and music and um, a short homily and the opportunity to um, have ashes placed on our foreheads or our hands as a sign of our beginning of this season of Lent together. Also want to encourage you to pick up daily devotions for Lent. You can find those in the Narthex as well. There's a printed one for adults, and then there are, uh, for the first time today, uh, eggshell cartons uh, filled with uh, Lenten devotions for children and families. So if you have not picked up one of those, be sure to get one of those today as well. Looking ahead, next Sunday is a congregational breakfast. Our pancake breakfast will take place in the fellowship hall uh, about 10 o'clock. So come and join us there uh, between services next week. Looking ahead just a little farther, the Six Needs of Every Child workshop is going to be held on February the 24th. Not only for uh, for parents, it's certainly for parents, but uh, for all those who care and um, and love children and are engaged in, in helping to make sure that they are raised and nurtured in the faith. It's an opportunity to be a part of that workshop on Saturday morning, the 24th. So I hope that you'll sign up to be a part of that. Um, You'll also see other opportunities to serve coming up as well. Vacation Bible School and Mission Camp. That will be here before we know it. And so please sign up to be a part of that important week together as well. At this time, let me ask our youth to come and share just a few moments with us about uh, their new mission project with Cinderella's Closet. Good morning. Good morning. We are the co-chairs of the youth leadership team, and we're here to tell you about one of the youth's upcoming service projects. On March 2nd, the high school youth will be volunteering with Tender Hearts Ministries in York to help sort and display prom dresses and accessories for their Cinderella's Closet prom event. Cinderella's Closet offers high schoolers who live in York and Chester counties the opportunity to come choose a prom dress, shoes, jewelry, etc. for free so that nobody feels left out on prom night. Beginning today through February 29th, we will be accepting donations of new or gently used long formal dresses, shoes, accessories, tuxes, bow tie cover bun vest sets, etc. 
You can bring them by the church office Monday through Thursday or on Sundays to the rack in the church narthex. We will also be in the narthex after the service if there are any other questions. We hope that you will take a look in your closets so that we can contribute to making prom night special for many high schoolers in our area. Please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. We find ourselves on the mountain this transfiguration day, witnessing a last flash of glory before a 40-day journey. It is not about us. It is all about Jesus Christ. From the River Jordan to this place, it is all about Jesus Christ. From the mountain to an empty tomb, it is all about Jesus Christ. Let us worship God.
Please be seated. Friends, God is vaster than the night sky, brighter than the sun, and stronger than the storm. Yet God loves us enough to appear in ways that are smaller and more intimate that we might see and hear through Jesus Christ. So trusting in that great love, let us now join in our prayer of confession together, first out loud and then silently. Let us pray. God of all glory, beauty, and grace, we have tried to hide from you, to hide our faces, to hide our sin, yet you have never hidden your love for us. We have tried to search for you in temples, in clouds, on mountaintops, yet you have already revealed yourself to us in the face of Jesus Christ. Forgive us and transform us so that our lives may shine with your glory, beauty, and grace. Amen. Our God comes and does not keep silent. God speaks to us with grace and love, saying, You are my beloved child. Hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Our first scripture reading for today is from the song book of Israel, the Psalms. Hear these words from Psalm 50, verses 1 through 6. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silent. Before him is a devouring fire and a mighty tempest all around him. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me, my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. At this time, let me invite our young friends, the children, to come and spend a few moments together with us here on the steps. If you are watching from home, hope that you'll draw near the screen as you might be a part of this special time together as well. We've got a few special guests who are coming to be a part of our time together this morning. Good morning, good morning. How are y'all today? 
good. It's good to see you. Thank you so much for coming up and being a part of worship. Worship is always so much better when you are here, and we really appreciate you being a part of the service today. Now, I was thinking about this blanket here, and I was wondering if any of you have blankets. Do you have blankets at your house? I, I have one. You do? Ooh. Yeah. A whole bin of blankets? Oh, my goodness. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? When I was your age, I had a blanket too, you know, and, and I don't remember when I got it, but it's, it was around for a long, long time. And my mom used to tell me it was my constant companion during those years. I know it comforted me when I was scared of the dark and it, it helped to keep me warm on cold nights, right? And it was most important, a very important part of the forts that I like to build in the, in the living room. That was important too. You do that too? Yeah, I know, exactly. I, 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 I feel really good. Yeah, okay, good. I feel, I feel really good with my There's lots of ways in which we can use blankets like that, right? A blanket does lots and lots of things, and not just for me. <clears throat> Imagine that you don't have a home. You're homeless, and it's wintertime, just like it is now, and it's cold and it's wet. How can I stay warm and dry? You know, a blanket might just help with that. Thank you. Imagine that you are a parent with two kids and the conflict where you live is getting worse and more intense and closer to home. You decide that to protect yourself and your family that you need to flee, but you don't have a suitcase. A blanket will help. Imagine your home and almost everything in it is destroyed by an earthquake. You now sleep in a makeshift community with hundreds of other people who with hundreds of other people who've also become homeless. There's little privacy. A blanket can help with that. See, a blanket does all kinds of things, right? It can give you warmth. It can be a suitcase when you have to leave unexpectedly. It can be your bed or your pillow and can even give you some privacy. Whatever else a blanket can be, it's certainly a sign of generosity, a sign of love, and a sign of compassion. You probably, together, all of us, as we give money for the blankets offering, we probably won't meet the people who receive the blankets that we give. But we can be sure that our compassion will be remembered for a long time. And even when those blankets become worn out or too small or they're simply packed away because the winter's over, those blankets remain a tangible sign to our most vulnerable neighbors that someone was thinking about them. Somebody cared enough to keep me warm. Someone understood how hard it was for me to leave my home. So thank, thank you, you for, for supporting, supporting Church World Service blankets. blankets. So let's pray together, okay? I'll pray a little bit and you can repeat after me. Let's pray. Dear God, Dear God, we thank you, we thank you for all you give to us, for, all you give to us. For, ways for ways we stay warm and are able to have a place to lay our heads. Help us to share with others what you have given us. Amen. All right. Thank you all so much for coming up today. If you're in first grade or under, headed to Children of Worship or Nursery, you can head out the door or back to your seats. We're going to surround you all with our song of blessing. the first of this new year, we've been reading together through the Gospel of Mark. And so our second scripture reading for today comes from that gospel from the ninth chapter. Today we read verses 2 through 10. 
Now this story we read today stands in the very center of Mark's gospel and it serves as a transition. So far we've been drawn into Jesus' ministry of teaching and healing. He's called some disciples to follow him as a part of the kingdom of God and yet they still remain pretty clueless as to who he is and what he is doing. Jesus has been teaching and healing primarily around the Jewish area near the Sea of Galilee, but he has crossed the sea a couple times into Gentile territory. Most recently, we've seen Jesus performing miracles like calming storms on the sea and feeding thousands of people. However, as we are entering this moment of transition in this text, the text that comes immediately before our verses today is Jesus' declaration that he will undergo great suffering, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, be killed, and after three days, rise again. But let us hear then this word of God. <clears throat> Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. And then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And then a cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud there came a voice this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Long before everyone carried a photo-taking device in their pockets disguised as a telephone, I remember having a small camera in which the back opened so that I could put film inside. Now, my uncle worked for Kodak, so our family was very loyal to yellow cartridges of film. They were the ones you had to use in your cameras. And some of you are probably too young to remember, but you actually had to open the back of the camera. You then took the cartridge, gently put it in, pulled out enough of the film so you could thread it into the other side of the compartment, closed the back, and then had to advance the film several times before you could start taking pictures. Most importantly, you also had to be quite discerning because you only got 18 or maybe 24 or if you spent the big bucks, maybe 36 pictures you could take on that roll of film. Once completed, you took the film cartridge out of the back of your camera. You took it to the store to be developed. Often that meant putting it in a paper envelope, dropping it in a slot at the drugstore, and then waiting at least a week or so before your pictures returned. Only then would you know if you had captured the moment you wanted to remember forever with the perfect shot, or if everyone's eyes were closed, and even worse than that, they were glowing bright red due to the flash that had captured them instead. I wonder if something like that's going on in Peter's mind <laughs> For in the midst of his terror and not knowing what to say, he blurts out, he says, Rabbi, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. 
Let's try to hold on to this perfect moment. Let's be sure we can always remember this time because, wow, Jesus, you are looking really good in white today. Everyone, let's get together now. Let's get a picture. Because let's not forget that getting to this point has not been the easiest journey for these disciples. From the day that they left their nets to follow Jesus, they've been traipsing around all over the Galilean countryside. There have been moments where the crowd threatened to crush them. There, have been that, there was that time when they were in the middle of the Sea of Galilee and that unexpected storm picked up and they thought they were going to die. But they've also seen miracles, right? Miracles with their own eyes, like Jesus feeding 5,000 people from a few loaves of bread and a few fish, and then turning around and doing it again for another crowd of 4,000. Jesus had healed those who suffered from fevers. He'd healed a woman who's been bleeding for 12 years. He even healed those possessed by demons, And then he told the disciples they would have power to go and do the same thing. He also didn't mind healing Gentiles on the other side of the sea. All this, plus these three who are now on top of the mountain with Jesus, had also been eyewitnesses to their teacher raising a little girl from the dead. They must have thought they had seen it all. So this must be not only the top of a high mountain, this must be the end of the road. This must be the last page of the story, the culmination of the journey. Transfigured before them, Moses and Elijah in the flesh raised from the dead, talking with Jesus. This is the glory, glory, hallelujah, the kingdom of God has finally come. It doesn't get any better than this, right? So let's build some booths. Let's make sure we've got some film in the camera. Let's all squeeze in a little closer now because it's time to lift the trophy. This is a picture we have to get. In his graphic novel version of the Gospel of Mark, artist and author Steve Ross depicts this scene all in black and white, comic book format, with Peter attempting to take a photo of Jesus and his holy companions. But the camera explodes in his hands. As Jesus comments, my friends, there are some things that you just can't freeze in time. Nothing lasts forever. Everything changes. Everything dies. The question is simply whether you want that to be the end of the story. My friends, what the disciples do not realize, but we as readers of this gospel certainly do, is that this episode, the one when Jesus took them up on a high mountain, is not the show's finale. This is not the end of the story. In fact, it may be just another beginning. Because you probably know that the true goal in climbing a mountain is not to make it to the top. We often think about that as being success, right? As the end of the story, it's reaching the summit, it's achieving our goals, it's being surrounded by accolades and glory. And yet I was reminded this week, time and time again, more people die on the climb back down the mountain than ever die on the way up. So often we forget that the true goal when someone leads us up a high mountain is to make it back down alive. That's what the voice is revealing to the disciples out of the cloud. This voice catches us off guard because so far this episode is all about what can be seen. 
the glow and color of Jesus' clothing, the appearance of Elijah and Moses, even the booths that Peter wants to build or the cloud that's overshadowing them all. And if the voice had said, behold him, or see him, or even look upon him, then we might think that getting to the top of the mountain was the end of the story. But no, what does the voice say? It first reaffirms who Jesus is. He's the beloved, the Son of God, which we as readers have known since the very first verse of this gospel. But then it issues a command. It says, listen to him. Yes, listen to him. Up to this point, as they climbed the mountain, as he was transfigured, the gospel records Jesus not saying a single word to the disciples. But as New Testament scholar Marianne Tolbert writes, what Jesus has been saying to Peter, the disciples, the multitude, and what he will reiterate in the coming chapters is a way of suffering, the cross, and death which he and any who would follow him must walk in this world. The glorious vision may be what Peter and many others want to see, but it is the message of suffering that all must hear. Yes, my friends, the life of faith is lived on the way back down the mountain. And at this halfway point in this gospel, I want you to notice that so far, no one has responded with faith to something that they have seen about Jesus, or even something they watched Jesus do. Sights and wonders in this gospel produce amazement, confusion, anger, plots to kill Jesus, and even some requests to follow him, but they do not result in saving faith. And you might remember from a parable about a sower who went out to sow seed that only the good soil that Jesus says is those who hear the word and accept it bears fruit. 30, 60, 100 fold. Again, Professor Tolbert writes, Peter is willing to be impressed by seeing a transformed Jesus, but unwilling to accept the word he preaches. And it is the word, not the image, that brings the kingdom of God in power. The kingdom of God coming in power is not the result of seeing Jesus' shiny garments or his communion with Elijah and Moses. It is the result of hearing his word and responding in faith. I think that's why Jesus tells Peter, James, and John to tell no one what they have seen. Sure, they could tell about the dazzling clothes, about Elijah and Moses, and even the voice from the the cloud. Jesus' fame would probably spread, the crowds would continue to grow, the authorities from Jerusalem would be quick to come and investigate. But the rest of the story... In fact, the real story that the Gospel of Mark wants to tell us is just beginning... Jesus predicted what is to come before they climbed up the mountain. Yes, the real story of Mark's gospel will not become public until after death on a cross and three days later with an empty tomb. Until that part of the story is revealed, it's best not to say anything at all. For this is God's story. And our God is not just a God of power and might, a a God of glory and shock and awe, a God of amazement and wonders. I'm pretty convinced if God arrived on a cloud with lightning bolts in his hand, people would certainly take notice, but they would not believe. They would not know the true character of our God. 
For our God's a God of love and sacrifice. A God who gives of himself to the point of death on a cross. A God who doesn't overwhelm us with glory or tell us of his power. He shows us the glory of the cross. Listen to him. That's the Kodak picture Jesus wants us to capture. That's the word God wants us to hear. Going up a high mountain is just to prepare Jesus and us for the rest of the story. Listen to him so that we might reach the bottom of the mountain where the other disciples and the crowds await and where if we hear and obey, we just might live. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of glory and might and power, God of grace and love and sacrifice, give us ears to hear that we might listen to the word Jesus teaches, that we might listen to Jesus himself, For the story is just beginning, the story of your great love that changes everything on a cross and with an empty tomb, a story that allows us to truly live. Give us faith, O Lord, as we hear, faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord, for it is in his name that we pray. Amen. My friends, in response to hearing Scripture read and proclaimed, I invite you to stand as you are able, that together we might make a declaration of what it is that we believe. Today we use words from the Scots Confession. You'll find them printed in your bulletin. Those who continue in well-doing to the end, boldly confessing the Lord Jesus, shall receive glory, honor, and immortality. We constantly believe to reign forever in life everlasting with Christ Jesus, to whose glorified body all his chosen shall be made like when he shall appear again in judgment and shall render up the kingdom of God to his Father, who then shall be and ever shall remain all in all things, God blessed forever, to whom with the Son and the Holy Ghost Be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And now let us take those things that are joys or concerns on our hearts and in our minds to the one who loves us. Let us pray. Creating God, you call us to go to the mountaintop with you and we follow, not quite sure of what is to happen, but we like mountaintops. We like the view from up here. We like mountaintop experiences. Sometimes we need the mountaintop with you when our days are dark and dreary, when our hearts are heavy, when the valleys seem more depressing than ever. And so we pray for the valley moments valleys of pain and suffering, valleys of loneliness and grief, valleys of addiction and rejection, valleys of circumstance, and valleys of our own making. And we are not alone in these deep places. Our world is full of them. Our nation and our neighbors around the globe find ourselves in the deepest valleys that sometimes we have dug together valleys of war and destruction, valleys of greed and hoarding, valleys of persecution and injustice. We pray today for each of your children in these low places, and we ask that you would continue to meet us here. Meet us here with your light and your grace and transform us. 
Transform our illness and pain into healing. Transform our isolation and fear of other into your beloved community. Transform our violence into your peace. Transform our despair into hope. And transform our hate into your unconditional love. So that we might once again join you on the mountaintop and bask in your glory. Lord, just as your disciples were changed by their experiences, we ask that you might also change and transform our lives so that we look more like the image of Christ that you have shown us. May our lives reflect your love, your hope, and your light. We ask all these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, God gives us all gifts, including the gift of free will that allows us to choose to worship the Almighty with our words, our actions, and our treasures. So let us make the choice now to honor God by the offering of our gifts, trusting that what we give will be blessed and given to God and to neighbors. Whether you give online or by mail or place your offering in the plates as they are passed, let us worship God with the giving of our gifts.
Almighty God, we hear your words from Scripture this morning. This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. We are here and we are listening. We hear your call to make the world a better place alongside your Spirit. We offer these gifts and our hearts and our hands. May they be blessed to do your work in this community and beyond. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My friends, as we go forth from this place, as our service of worship concludes, may our lives of worship and service begin anew. May what we have seen and heard on this mountaintop sustain and strengthen us as we listen to Jesus on the way down and each step that might follow from here. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.